How's it going guys? In today's video, I'll be showing you different grid effects that you can achieve in Framer. The first effect we have is this faded grid. We also have it here. This grid effect is infinite. So if I enlarge this, you can see there's always more grid. It infinitely generates. This is really good if you want your site to be scalable. Essentially what it is, it's a tile that will duplicate an infinite amount of times. So first let's create the tile. What we're gonna do is draw a square on the screen. Let's remove the fill and add a border. Now here in the border, let's give it a really dark color, so set it to black. And in width, we're going to click on this little button right here. And what this allows us to do is modify each side individually, as you can see. We're going to put two on top and two on the left, and then set the bottom and right to zero. This will leave us with this shape. And what we're going to do is hit export and download it to our computer. Now, once you have it downloaded, create the frame that you want to apply the effect to. Then here in fill, click on image and select what we just exported. Now in type, we want to set it to tile. And as you can see now, if I expand this, it will infinitely generate the tile. So let's just play with it. I'll show you what you can do with it. First of all, what you can do is play with the scale. So we can either make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to make it something like let's just see loaded something like this right then i'm gonna position it in the center meaning when i expand it okay let's just make it bigger so you can see when i expand it it expands to the size how do we get this fade effect so i'll just be showing you the example with this grid right so it's the same thing just inverted made the background black and the grid white we have this section of the grid this frame we're simply going to draw a stack within it set it to absolute and select zero on all of the sides then we're gonna go to fill select this gradient effect and then make it black on the outside and fully transparent on the inside now if i bring it out here uh, you have this kind of fade effect that when you lay on top of a black background in this case it looks like the grid just fades and this is exactly what i did in these two sections so i did it here in the header I just faded it and I did the same here. Uh, what you might see is kind of this shine effect that we have going on here. I showed this in one of my previous videos. If you want to learn in depth how to do it, you can go watch it. Next effect is this scalable grid. This effect is really good just to replace a plain background, just add a bit of character to your frames. So if you look closely, it's essentially just uh, absolute frames that are centered both horizontally and vertically let me show you how i did it right here what we're gonna do is press f to draw a frame let's give it a border so we're gonna give it a border make it black give it a bit of width so you can see what i do obviously make it thinner if you want on your side then we're gonna give it a layout so we can actually put text in it and it aligns right so let's just play with the layout a bit give it a bit of padding let's maybe throw in a title okay so you can actually like have elements within it and now what we're gonna do is add a frame make it absolute give it a slightly transparent dark color then in width set it to let's say one i'm gonna set it a bit wider so it's easier to see then here on position you set it to zero on both the bottom and top then we're simply going to duplicate it put five on the height instead and then here put zero on the right and the left and make sure to center it as well now i made everything wide here so it might look a bit odd but if you make everything thin then it should look nice and slick now let's move on to the next effect so the next one is a very interesting one if you have a product or you want to show some sort of comparison then a lot of websites what they like to do is make a comparison table as you see here I actually got this suggestion from alex on twitter so if you have any suggestions and you want me to make a video about them make sure you follow me on twitter let's jump straight into it if we really try to break this down all that we did here is we have a main frame which just has a bunch of rows in it and the rows are divided into different columns all right so let's jump straight into it what we're going to do is draw a frame very quickly give it a nice background color now let's give it a layout and draw an inner frame this is going to be our text column uh, so let's actually also put a text so label now let's add a layout to this frame so the text is actually aligned to the start give it a bit of padding and let's set the height to fit now the width is up to you to decide we're going to go to the main frame and set that to fit as well and in layout distribution put that on start so we have the first column on the very left side now let's just remove the fill color and give it a border again the border we only want that on the right so let's remove everything except for the right width and let's give it a black color for now right now we're just going to duplicate this and let's remove the text but this time set it to fill then we can duplicate it a bunch more times 
and go to the mainframe and remove the gap right now let's go to these four columns and set the height to fill so that it matches the height of the text so now you can see if we have more text these columns are just based on the text uh, what i did here for the ticks is i made a custom component that simply has a main variant a no variant and a yes variant we put the main variant on our row and then the other variants on the competitors rows so let me just copy that a bunch of times and let's select all of these frames and um, put distribution to center right now we can put this on no this on yes and this on no just to create a bit of variations right now as you can see we have this main row which is highlighted in blue so what we're going to do is just change the borders that touch this frame to be blue as well so we're going to select these two let's give them a slightly larger width and give it a different color now we actually don't need this border on the side because we're going to have a main frame that has a different border so let's remove that now we just need to add the top line so let's go to the main stack and add a border and again select only the top border to be visible now we're going to select the entire row right click and add a stack then go back to the row let's actually rename it to row and set the width to fill let's go to the main stack and set direction to vertical and just duplicate the row a bunch of times and remove the gap now what we need to do is sort out this top row that has the names we'll go to the top row and simply remove the icons and put text instead let's make sure the text is centered and just paste it a bunch of times now we're just going to go on the main column and make the fill the main color then we can also change the text to white and maybe make it bold just to stand out nice and we can remove this label here just remove it and maybe set the height to fill if you need now let's go here to the main stack that holds all of the rows and give it a bit of radius so something like 16 should work now again we don't need a border on the top row so let's go to the top row and remove that and go back to the main stack and give it a border i like to give it a bit of a dashed border just because i think it looks nice we can also give it a different color and at this point we're pretty much done the last thing you can do is go to the very bottom frame on this column and just also add a bit of a wide bottom border to make it stand out more we can do the same for the top one here right something around like this works that's pretty much it that's exactly what i did here and it should work the same for you the last trick i've got for you is this infinite animation on a grid so let's jump straight into component and see how i did it i'll actually recreate this right next to it so you can see how i did it so first of all we're going to create a frame uh for now i'll leave it with the fill just so you can see better but generally you want to remove the fill at the end right draw a frame we're going to set this frame to absolute and put it on zero 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 and zero so that it touches all of the sides let's remove the background on this frame and let's call this frame vertical right this is where we're gonna have our vertical lines so to do this simply add a layout set the distribution to space between and draw a single frame now what we're gonna do is give it a black color just so we can see it better set the height to fill and the width to something like two now we're just gonna take this frame call it line and duplicate it a bunch of times so let's just duplicate uh, until we feel like it's a good amount now we're just gonna duplicate vertical call it horizontal uh, remove all of the lines except for one go and change the distribution then go to line and instead of uh, width to and height fill we're gonna set the width to fill and the height to two right now we're again just gonna duplicate it until we think We've got something nice. I think this is good. Now, as you can see, this is not exactly a square shape. So I'm just going to play with the frame until I get it to be squares. And this seems good. Now, what I did is I created a component. This component has two variants. It's simply just a very thin rectangle. I set this uh, width to be somewhere around five so that it's bigger than the lines. And all that I did is give it a gradient. So it goes from white to transparent. And then I simply duplicated it and created a second variant. But instead of the height being three, the width is three. Now what we're gonna do is simply paste this component. I'm just gonna remove the background now so we can see what we're doing. So we'll paste this component. We'll center it right here. Make sure it's centered. Let's select every line um, and set the overflow to hidden. Now we're simply gonna add a loop animation. So let's go on loop and uh, move it on the X until it reaches the other side so somewhere around here and set the opacity to zero now what we're going to do is paste this in every other line 
we're gonna do the same but for the other direction so let's paste it align it to the left this time let's rotate it so that the gradient faces the opposite direction and here just instead of minus 930 we're gonna have it just on 930 this will move it uh, to the right as you can see and we're just gonna set the opacity to zero and it's the same concept for the top let's do this very quickly we're gonna go to the vertical line and paste this let's align it to the top and the center so click here and let's switch to our vertical variant now let's also rotate it 180 degrees so that the gradient faces the right direction and we're simply going to apply this effect but instead of offset on the x we're going to offset on the y this is going to just move it to the bottom let's set the opacity to zero we're going to paste it every other line so you can actually go here to the layer section and just skip every other line and now we're going to duplicate it and just align it to the bottom flip it 180 degrees and instead of 550, we're gonna do minus 550, which just moves it up. And again, paste it on every other line. If you did this right, what you're gonna have is something like this, but it looks weird. What you wanna do is set these at random times. So you don't actually want them to all be synchronized. We can actually also select all of the gradients by hitting control, give them a spring transition. And now we're gonna go to each shine and give it a delay. So. This one's gonna have a one delay. This one's gonna have a 0.3 delay. This one's gonna have a seven delay. And you're just gonna go like that uh, on each gradient and give it a different random time. And if you do that right, what you're gonna have is something that looks like this. Then we use the same gradient fade that we used in the first tip, which is just this gradient. You can actually play with the width here if you want it to be less smooth and we just fade out the gradient that way and this gives us this nice effect you can use it as a background in your section so what i did is i put the text on top of it as an absolute layer all right guys first and foremost make sure you subscribed if you found this useful i really spent a lot of effort bringing valuable content to you guys so that would mean a lot to me comment down below what you want me to go over next peace out